Is yeah. there such a farm? There, there is such a farm. Wow. <laughs> um, uh, on our, on our uh, panel, on our premiere on Sunday, Donnie Stephan, the head of the, the body farm in Tennessee, the Forensic Anthropology Research Facility, was up on that panel. <laughs> and I had no, no idea that this existed. This, this was a project Jason and I were talking the other day that felt it, the idea was there, and it almost was like archaeology to discover this thing that pre-existed. And a lot of that was in the research, the research into the Hasidic community, and Kabbalistic traditions, and into Jewish folklore, and also this intense research into science. The first thing that I uncovered was the fact that pigs are actually used because they're considered a biological equivalent to, to, to people. And I knew we were dealing with a Hasidic man, and I said, how, how can I not? You know? <laughs> but, um, but then we arrived at, at, at the body farm, and the question was, how can I get these characters there? This is so uncanny and scientifically profound. Um, if you don't know about it, you, sh you should read up on it. The, the research that they do is geared towards uh, forensic anthropology and, and, and criminology. Um, one of the interesting things that I thought in, in that conversation was, you know, the body, the people who donate their body, they, they're called donors, and they need to be used to, to profound and noble ends. Um, and so understanding, uh, they're studied in, in, in criminal situations and less so in routine ritual burials. And so, that thought of putting, again, putting that science, it, it, there's very little known about how a body decomposes under standard conditions that are non-criminal in nature, and putting that research in conversation with emotion um, was really, really interesting to me. Maybe one more, yeah. Um, I thought something you did beautifully was kind of honoring the Jewish tradition and culture, but also it was incredibly irreverent at times. So how as a writing team did you guys navigate that fine line and where did you have concerns or, or questions as someone coming from that background about representing? Um, I want to, I'll say something quickly, and I'd love to pass it off to Geza as well. I mean, uh, humor is a part of Judaism as well, and, and well, we dabbled in blasphemy, um, and the character dabbles in blasphemy. It's never intended to lampoon. Um, and so making sure that it, that it came out of a place of honesty, and, and again, part of the Jewish DNA is this sort of Borscht Belt nature of it. Um, Geza uh, is intensely religious on his own, and when we met, I was very afraid, because I did a lot of research and a lot of, of, of making sure that, that it was authentic, with Jason also you know, contributing in, in this way of like, I don't understand this, I need to understand this, oh, we don't need to understand this, um, this is funny, can we get away with it? And I think that also that tension of like, what is borderline and what's not borderline, and if we worked that out between us, when I got the script, to gaze and to read it and, and just nervously awaiting his response because I assumed we had this thing that, that isn't intended to offend but very well might and that our conversation wouldn't continue and Gaz is coming on board and, and loving the script and, and, and getting a sense of the authenticity and the intention um, was the first val validation I'm going to let him pick up that up from there. Well, I, I, I have friends who know way more than I do and I showed the script to them as well. I'm not such a you know, big scholar, but I, I always felt very important that that, um, that religion is being represented in a respectful way. Yet, obviously, you take a lot of artistic license. And, uh, as they often say, kids don't try this at home. So. <laughs> this, is, this is not, uh, it wasn't meant to be an educational or uh, instructor. <laughs> But I, th I think one of the conversations we had early on is that this movie, uh, is, is it necessarily or, or anyway impossible to imagine the same story in a non-Jewish or another religious context? And I, I thought that it really it must be Jewish simply because there is this general setup uh, between science and religion, it's really silly. I think it's more the matter of the le left brain, left side of the brain, right side of the brain. Simply science and religion don't compete over territory. They answer different questions. Science tells you how life is, and religion tells you how it is ought to be. So I didn't see the conflict, but here Jewish tradition came sort of handy because, because not having a, a set of dogmas in, in Judaism, there was always present open mind towards 
science, so sure as Hunter educated he is, secularly speaking, I mean, he can see, he, he doesn't know much, really, his, his whole schooling from age three is all about the rabbinic literature and, you know, the whole scripture. But, but he is not hesitant, and I really admire both him and Arthur because they're both stepping out from their comfort zone. You know, there is so much despise, I have to say, probably on both sides. Some religious folks wrongly, you know, view the non-believers with, with some negative way. And of course, the enlightened, progressive, Seculars, they think that religious people are superstitious, primitive idiots. And so these two, Albert and Shmuel, they form this online oh friendship, and it's so beautiful how it's in, pretty much in the beginning of the movie, you say, there is no we, <laughs> and then you say, like, we're gonna do right by your wife. And mm -hmm. You say the we, so there's, there's this we gets. You know, formed and, and it's so. This is really a, a a movie about loss and also finding another relationship that is so meaningful. That is. I think that's actually all we have time for today.